welcome everyone and i have with me an amazing out and proud trans woman zaina patel head of diversity and inclusion at kpmg india welcome to the show zainab and it's fabulous having you with here with us here thank you dr sandeep yeah you know i'm going to jump right in and ask you this question when did you first realize that you were different that your identity was different i think it's the world that first realized my identity is different from my expression and okay. i always knew from the time i was uh, started getting cognizant of things around me that my gender identity expression is different from the sex which was assigned to me at birth okay. so it was a long and ardent uh, struggle for me it's only in the last 10 years which i have been able to affirm my gender identity expression considering the fact that i had family obligations also difficulties migration to a new city uh, and a lot of transphobia around okay usually uh, for trans people uh, the early life you know childhood especially the teenage years they are very difficult years you know especially because you are transitioning you have you have kind of understood that your identity is different from what was assigned and therefore you are kind of transitioning how was it in your case zaina very painful dr sandeep yeah coming from a very liberal sounding um, future looking roman catholic family where there wasn't any traumatic childhood experience around growing up around strict gender norm or misogyny of that sort but as i went to an all boy school i realized that in my adolescent and pre puberty stage that i was not fitting in within the norm there was a certain pressure from the family and from the church because i went to a church based institution for my education to conform to a certain gender rigidity although it was not as strict as what you would see in the other way in the other world but there was this constant pressure to perform and to conform to one identity i think the years between my standard age and completion of my higher secondary certificate sir was the most difficult because i struggled with depression i struggled to self harm so imagine a person who is eight between 8 uh, and 10 standard it was anywhere between 14 and 16 years and i had suicidal tendencies and i tried to self harm myself and i used to find all sorts of excuses for not going to school for a simple reason i was a bright kid i was not i should not stand first in the class but but between the fourth and the sixth i i was i considered myself to be a bright kid it started impacting the way i started thinking started behaving and i i i would do, go to any extent to avoid school my parents then sent me to a boarding school hoping that that would change my experience so everyone has different levels of varying um, traumatic experience but yes shunning out uh, singling people out of on grounds of their identity is very real and suicidal tendencies and depressions are happening real time absolutely uh, i mean um, it's just amazing uh, zainab how much you have had to battle in in your young age you know to to actually be who you are but there is this very popular misconception about trans people that you know uh, you, the, your identity is under your control and that you can change it whenever you want so being part of the community how how do you think such a misconception can be handled and in your case how did you handle it i remember this one line particularly from osho who said that the world becomes beautiful the moment you start loving yourself unfortunately a lot of people who who are in a position of privilege think it's easy to choose or control your own gender identity and expression but they have to realize the privilege that they were born with a gender identity and expression that matches their sex right from the time you are in your mother's womb you are conditioned to either be male or female from the color of booties to sweater to child wear to education that one gets all of it is normative in the sense because it focuses only on two genders we are not gender agnostic in our training or upbringing or social conditioning so the fact is that most of the world are so used to the social and conditioning as male or female that they don't realize the privilege that they were born for a person like me who has undergone 
a lot of personal issues and struggle to come where I am with regard to my own gender identity and expression. It is not a personal choice to be trans or to identify in in an expression which is not considered normative, not considered natural. But if I were to even live for one day as a woman, in spite of all the problems that I have gone, I would still make that choice because that is the true me. How beautiful is that? How beautiful is that, Zainab? Zainab, uh, you mentioned about having worked uh, in the UN. Now, one of the things that I find, you know, in our research about trans people is that they change jobs very frequently due to the oppression. They change jobs very frequently due to the kind of biases that they face, the very inimical atmosphere that they have to be a part of. So how did you manage this? I mean, a job with UN is one thing, but right now you are the head of diversity and inclusion at KPMG. And I'm sure that, you know, the kind of impact that you're going to have in this role and what you're already having is simply amazing. So how did you deal with, you know, job changes, with having built your own career as a trans person? So I worked in the UN system for slightly more than a decade. So I'm actually as old as some of the furniture in, in the United Nations office in India. So okay. considering that there was four foundation furniture, that means there was really old furniture. <laughs> but uh, I've, been, I've been a person who believes in working with the organization and leaving an imprint in whatever I do. So there were, there were challenges like with any given job. No job is perfect. No work culture is immaculate. You have to work. You have to evolve. So I think some of the inherent challenges when I started working and transitioning was that no one talked about transitioning then. No one talked about trans rights at the workplace. No one talked about equality. No one, and furthermore, no one even believed in equity. So from the challenge about finding a washroom of my choice yeah, yeah. to not drinking water because it had to, you know, if I had to use the washroom of, if I didn't get to use the washroom of my choice, I would stop drinking water so that I didn't, no, and it is a bad habit that I'm still dealing with because that was the only way of dealing. So my, so till today, most of the water intake that I have comes in through tea, coffee throughout the day rather than actually sipping on water slowly trying to break the habit, but it's something which is ingrained in me. It's something like a phobic reaction. To the fact that, uh, you know, a simple thing, like today we play, pay so much of emphasis on a preferred pronoun. And people say, what's the big deal about he, him, his, her, she, hers? And I would like to say that in a world which is full of misogynist people, people who are out to break you down on, on grounds of class, caste, religion, ethnicity, you don't want a pronoun to be a harbinger of bad ill will between you. So my colleagues in my previous organizations, whether they were the United Nations, could never get on to the fact that they would never stop calling me from my dead name. And why? So dead name is basically a name which is used for a trans person which denotes the previous male name or a legal name. So they, for them, they thought that my name was the best name and why would I choose something like this, uh, you know? So they, so they were not, they were not ill-meaning, but they were definitely ill-informed and did not make an effort for a very long time to call me by my preferred name. So yes, challenges are real. There are people who commit suicide, people who feel depressed walking into a space which they cannot claim as their own. And what is the fault? It is just expression. They are not even talking about same-sex attraction or whatever. So even mere expression. Yes. So today, if someone dresses up and goes to office, no one questions them. You know, but the fact is that if a trans person or a gender non-conforming person, yeah. Yeah. if they do, if they bring in some expression, which is not considered to be the norm, it creates a lot of issue within the workspace. And that kind of becomes the friction point between entities. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Zainab, I'm going to take a slightly different track here and ask you something which, you know, is also a point that, that concerns talent managers. And this is about, you know, the feeling of being a victim, which uh, a lot of, you know, members of the LGBTQ community, they feel that. And while it's absolutely, uh, you know, I mean, everyone knows the kind of tough journey that especially members of the LGBTQ community undergo. 
how can someone uh, you know get rid of this victim feeling and how can they actually be positive could you give us some insights on that zaina i i think i i'll talk about my story and then try and build it if people can able to use some of this see the feeling of victimhood is something which is ingrained from your childhood because from from the time you start getting cognizant either of your same sex attraction or same you know alternate gender preference in terms of expression or identity that's a time when you start you get start getting shame for being who you are i think that's a very difficult cross to bear dr sautandaria and that continues into adulthood it continues into professions it continues into relationships it comes continues into worldly dealings i think at the workplace i followed a very simple mantra and i i think i was a successful career diplomat with the un so i'll use that experience one is i had a very sympathetic boss i think she was uh, she was very concerned about my professional development and she always encouraged me to think beyond the box but for to think beyond the box i could deliver beyond the box one has to be creative one has to be intuitive and one has to stand up to the challenges yes being a victim will always be there as part of your story because that's part of your narrative but the fact is can you use experiences from your victim mode to change them into stories of resilience or strength that is individually upon us mm-hmm. while we understand and while as reporting managers would be sympathetic towards your condition you have to put yourself at par with say a single struggling mother a a, a male colleague who's probably dealing with as much work stress in terms of performing professionally and you know also living up to his so the fact is that your conditions may not be very different from who your other colleagues but yes your identity and orientation may put you at an additional risk but the fact is that vulnerability is something that we will conquer and need to be tackled on a day to day basis so someone interestingly once said that lgbt people if they put their mind to certain things they can overcome the world you know because because of certain feminine and masculine traits which kind of make you an excellent manager both are manifest in you so you'll have to recognize the way to deal with the pressures of situation at the same time use some inherent strengths that you have you stand up to homophobia you stand up to bullying that already puts you in an advantageous position mm-hmm. say compared to women Who, who's dealing with should i get pregnant should i not get pregnant is my life even going to impact my career progression you know is the distance from my home to the work so i think those are some realistic lessons that need to be put in place you know zaina listening to you is is truly a very spiritual experience i mean as i as i hear what you say i'm able to understand that you know we all everyone in spite of all the diversity in spite of all the differences we all we all are the same and the uh, challenges sure. may be different you know the skin we wear may be different but uh, but but deep down i think there is a universal energy which connects all of us and that's what i hear you saying <laughs>